Laker fans, what's going on, everybody? Great to see everyone. Thank you for tuning back in. Appreciate it. Kind of getting the season underway here. Obviously, fifth game heading in to play Cleveland. That should be a fun one. Uh, Cle Cleveland's really good. They're one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. They have not lost. They're 4-0. Obviously, the Lakers, great start to the season. Tough, tough one to swallow the other night against Phoenix. There was a lot of opportunities for the Lakers to win that game. But, uh, hey, the Lakers can't go 82-0. Even though we would all like them too, so uh, look, looking to bounce back here against the Cavs. I'm gonna get into a little preview about that game later. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a pet peeve of mine about the NBA, and uh, I'm gonna start off though with JJ Redick holding himself accountable. JJ Redick gets an A plus from me so far. I mean, he he has been outstanding. Obviously, not many people would uh, project the Lakers to start off the season three and zero. We knew he was going to be great behind the mic. He was in the offseason. Obviously, he was you know, on first take, worked for ESPN for a while, but was was calling games for ESPN. So so very very good with the media, understandably. The, the media likes him, a lot of them, because he's, he's friends, his personal relationships with, with all of them. But uh, he, he's been great. And it, it was it was kind of interesting to hear what he had to say in a loss. Obviously, he was 3-0 to start, so he hadn't, he hadn't had a loss yet. Anthony Davis said after the game, he's like, J.J. Redick was pissed after the loss. And, and the, the Austin Reeves kind of mentioned it, too. And they loved it. It was like, I mean, he was taking it hard. It's fourth game of the season. It's easy to kind of sweep it under the rug and go, ah, the Lakers just started off 3-0. Already beat a tough Phoenix team at home, thinking they're going to want some get back. J.J. Redick wasn't having it. J.J. Redick wants, wants to win. And, and I think it kind of ties back into him studying film with the car wash and being super competitive. I mean, he was a high-level player in this league not too long ago. A great competitor in it and and it's uh it's exciting seeing him he, he talks to reporters after the game he said any nitpicks about the law should probably be directed towards him and specifically to their 14 point second quarter he said quote we should never have never have a 14 point quarter so that's on me as well part of that is me i gotta make sure we're running good offense i felt like it was a little random we got stalled out we talked about it at halftime for us to be a high level offense we got to move bodies and we got to move the ball they got a screen. They just kind of took us out of what we were doing initially, and we were great in the second half. We executed great in the second half. It's just that second quarter really, really, really hurt him. So, I mean, I love what he's saying there. He's taking blame. That the game really didn't feel like it was on him. Uh, I, you know, everyone kind of had something to do with it. Obviously, LeBron. I'm not going to sit here and kill LeBron. LeBron's unbelievable, but did not have a very good performance. Probably one of the, one of the worst in recent memory. And, and it felt like at the end of the game. Really, it was like LeBron hit that one three when he was at seven to, to, to kind of hit double digits, hit 10. And then it felt like LeBron was just going to take over. LeBron was going to be taking shots, took way too many shots at the end of the game instead of just running offense. I think it came back to bite the Lakers a little bit. But, you know, I guess we'll give LeBron a pass because because he I mean, he did put up 32 points the other night. So uh, and I doubt LeBron will be having games like that again, especially in Cleveland, his hometown. I'm sure he's going to he's going to show out for that one. But. JJ Redick, I, I believe really what he's saying is right. Um, there's a Twitter account I, I follow called Cranges Make Basketball. <laughs> it sounds goofy, but go, go give him a follow. Uh, they, they broke down a stat: shots created for teammates per bad pass turnover within half court play. So basically, you know, are you, are you creating shots for guys or are you turning the ball over? They broke it down. AD put infinite hasn't had a bad pass turnover in half court play this season. Uh, LeBron 20.5, D'Lo 17.5. Uh, then it drops off. Max Christie, nine. Jackson Hayes, eight. Austin Reeves, eight. And here's the real drop off. Don Connect, four. Rui, 3.5. And Gabe, 2.0. So they're they're turning the ball over at, at, at a pretty significant clip versus making shots for their teammates and putting them in good spots. I'm going to give Connect a pass. Obviously, he's a rookie and kind of getting adjusted. Rui, it's kind of surprising to see him that low on that list. He's been great, obviously scoring. He's had a really good year so far. I'm pretty disappointed in Gabe Vincent. Um, you expect a lot more out of him, especially out of a veteran, a guy who's been in this league for a while, that to not be turning the ball over. I understand Rookie's going to make mistakes. I even understand Rui. He's really trying to, to score and be a scoring option. Comes with that, it are going to be turnovers. But I think there's a lot of – there's a lot of – there's too much standing around when the bench comes in. There's too much – unless – Vincent or Christie or or Connect or one of these guys are having an unreal night where th they're scoring and they're really feeling it. it. The offense becomes stagnant and the starters, understandably, have played together a lot more. They really move the ball and run the offense, and I think that's what hurt them at the end of the game. Is the 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 starters kind of play, started playing like the bench a little bit in the sense of they weren't moving the ball. 
I know Gabe Vincent was closing out the game. Some people had some questions on that. They weren't moving the ball and running the offense and kind of putting it through Anthony Davis. They were more just kind of standing around and waiting for the big three to hit. And the Suns felt like they were just running their offense. They were switching. They had a great game plan. They were switching uh, Gabe Vincent onto Kevin Durant. I mean, Gabe Vincent, you know, just said the size, he's not going to be able to guard Kevin Durant. Rui Hachimura kept getting switched off and got to give Budenholzer credit. I mean, he, he made the adjustments and was able to, uh, to, to really take advantage of that because Kevin Durant's lethal scorer as we all know, but uh, I'm curious to see that in this game. We'll get into the Cleveland game in a minute, but you know, I'm sure, I'm sure the Cavs saw that on film. They're going to try to switch Donovan Mitchell onto, onto a smaller guy. Um, same with Evan Mobley, obviously, but you know, he, he's in, he's in the front court. Um, so, so I'm curious to see the kind of adjustments JJ makes, but I love him take, taking the blame. It really wasn't all his fault. Uh, he's, he's coached unbelievably so far this year. I don't think a lot of that game was his fault, but he's really sticking up for his guys in something that I don't know that Darvin Ham was doing last year, even. So, Pepe, even mine. The NBA admits they blew the call on Anthony Davis last night. Anthony Davis got poked in the eye, got 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 hit, pushed in the back. Mason Plumley. There was 103 left in the game. It was a missed layup. Um, it, he should have gone to the free throw line. It was a terrible call. When the NBA does this, it drives me crazy. In the NFL, all of them too, when they apologize the next day for a missed call because it's like, that's great, but we all knew watching it that it was a foul. And I'm not trying to just bring up refs on on the show, but it, you, know, you can nitpick a lot of calls. Admitting that the call was wrong the next day does absolutely nothing for no one. It doesn't change the record. It doesn't change the fact that the Suns won the game. It doesn't change the fact that Anthony Davis got poked in the eye. Um, it's, it's really, it's like someone punching you in the face and then coming the next day and saying, they're sorry. You still have a black eye, unfortunately. So I, it, it's always kind of drove me crazy. I saw this earlier today as I was kind of researching, um, that they were admitting that they blew the call. I'm like, I don't really want to hear that. It drives me nuts when, when, when this goes on, just make the call the right at the time, you know, and maybe the Lakers have a different outcome. Maybe they don't, who knows? We'll never know. We're on a Cleveland but it's always been a pet peeve of mine when the when the NBA or the NFL steps in the, the day after and makes the big grand gesture that they they got it wrong. Yeah, we know you got it wrong. So, you know, let's move on. Uh, going to Cleveland. Cleveland, this is going to be a fun game. Cleveland Cleveland is a really good team. They uh, are 4-0 in, in the Eastern Conference. Really built a solid roster over the last few years. And in a team that I think flew under a lot of people's radar because they don't have the same maybe – star power of a Boston, obviously, a, a Knicks, even a Miami, a, a Milwaukee with Giannis and Dame. They don't really have the same star power, but Donovan Mitchell's a baller. And, and we know this from playing the Jazz for, for many years in the Western Conference. Um, Evan Mobley, you know, the, the, from USC, USC kid, he was unbelievable. He's really transformed into a star. Jared Allen, I think, coming over from Brooklyn has been a really – quiet ad that's really become a really nice player in this league. Darius Garland had 34 points the other night against the Knicks. He's 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 a very good guard as well. Dean Wade, nice nice role player. Their bench is kind of shorter. Sam Merrill, Karis LeVert, and George Niang are kind of the guys that get most of the looks. They get the most minutes. A couple other guys check in, but those are the three that they'll be looking for to, to get scoring off the bench. All those guys are kind of high-volume scorers. Uh, Karis LeVert, really a high-volume scorer. George Niang, uh, can score the ball and so can Sam Merrill. So that place can be rocking. I heard some rumors that I, I don't, I hope it's, you know, I, Bronny may play tomorrow. I, I feel like this, this, listen, who knows what happens? I, I, it's LeBron's homecoming. I don't, this is a big game and it's against a really good team. So I, I hope we're not wasting minutes just for, for, for a photo shoot. I feel like we already kind of did that and it was very nice on the opening night. But I don't feel like we really need to do it again. I'd like to see the Lakers get back on a winning track. Um, getting a win in Cleveland would be, would be nice because that, that's a really good team. We know LeBron's probably going to have a bounce back game. Didn't play well against against Phoenix. You know, playing back in his hometown. I'm sure he's going to go great. I like to see. I I, I want to see how they're going to handle the switching. Teams are going to try to switch the smaller defenders on to um, their best scores. We saw it in Minnesota. JJ Rake did a great job, I think, of not letting. D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves be getting switched off to for Anthony Edwards. It was kind of a sound defensive performance. Knowing you have AD down there in the front court, who's an excellent shot blocker, excellent defender. Uh, don't, don't, 
don't put guys like Austin Reeves, D'Angelo Russell on islands against guys that they, they, they're really not, you know, talented enough defensively to defend. And then Gabe Vincent, it's it's a tough task. He's not going to defend Kevin Durant. It's just not going to happen. Um, he's just too small. So I want to see how they're gonna, how they're going to counteract that. Are they going to go under screens? Um, are they going to fight through it? Are they going to be passing them off? Um, but uh, but Cleveland's a good team. It, it should be rocking. They're favored by four and a half right now. But uh, I expect the Lakers come out, get a get a big win, start the road trip one and one, and then you got some easier games heading into into the weekend. I think the Lakers can take advantage of. But thank you everybody. I really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, go Lakers. Get back on track. Get to four and one. And uh, thank you guys. Be back with another preview video for uh, the game after on Friday. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.